Okay, so the next tool we're going to learn is the picture tool, how to add pictures to your document layout. Now, just like the text tool, there's a whole tool associated with it. it it's called the picture content tool. It's located right under your text tool. Just like the text tool, to create or to add a picture to your layout, we'll have to create a picture box. We do this by clicking and dragging, and just like the text tool, it'll give us an outline box. But when we release, you'll see that there is a blue X going through your box that you created. This means that it's a picture box, but there's no picture yet inside of it. Also, just like the text box, we've got the different little boxes along the corners and the edges that will allow us to resize our box. And if we go down to our measurements palette, we can get our uh, usual layout for this. We can see the position of our text box in relation to the upper left hand corner. And we can also type in a specific size for it. I didn't show you this before, but let's say we wanted to create a box that was exactly 5 inches by 3 inches. Once I've typed them into here, our um, picture box that we created will automatically adjust to that size. Additionally, we can also adjust the rotation and various other aspects of it. And we'll go into this a little later. To add a picture to this box, we'll go up to File, and then down to Import. And from Import, we'll choose the picture that we want to use. In this case, I've chosen some flowers that I found on the internet. And then we'll click on Open. And you can see the flowers are now inside, relatively inside, the picture box that we created. But notice that some of it is outside of it. This is because the image uh, that we created was actually bigger than the picture box allowed. So this means you'll see that there's um, some uh, outside areas of it. And when I move my cursor over it, I get a little hand. If I click and drag, you can see I can move my image around inside the text box. If I was to click outside of this area, you'll see the image disappears, and now I'm left with just the, uh, the image itself. But if I click back on it, I get my image itself. If I wanted to scale down my image, I can click on either uh, one of these round blue uh, little dots that are along the edge and the side of it. If I click and drag, I can adjust the height and width proportion of it. But remember, if we hold down our shift key, we can constrain our proportions and scale everything down to fit exactly. And so this is how you would get it to fit exactly into an image or a uh, text box that you have, in this case, an image box. So when I click on the outside, you can see that I've created an image that uh, easily fits this text box. Additionally, just like with our text tool, if I move on the outside of the image, I can click and rotate my image inside the text box, excuse me, inside the picture box, and again, you see it there. Additionally, I can go outside the picture box and rotate that as well. And so there's lots of little different dynamics you have from within there. Also notice, let's go down to our measurements palette. I told you on the left hand side we have the position and the dimensions of the picture box. On the right hand side we have the dimensions and position of the picture that's within it. Right now the picture has been scaled down to about 60 percent and the position within the box is about one tenth of or excuse me one one hundredth of an inch to a quarter of an inch off. And it has a rotation we see of about negative two degrees. And so that's what all the information down in your um, measurements palette will give you. Additionally, if I needed to move it over, again, we can choose our move tool, our item tool, which is the arrows, and I can move it down. Notice when I choose my item tool that I don't get my full image uh, outline. In order to affect the image that's inside of there, be sure that you have your picture content tool selected. That'll give you your little blue dots, which will allow you to rotate and scale your image from there. Some other things you can do with a picture once it's inside of there. Let's look at down in our menu, our, our uh, measurements palette. You'll notice this uh, uh, little icon that has a left or right-facing arrow and an up-facing arrow. 
If we click on this one, this will adjust the horizontal flipping of the image. So watch what happens when I click it. You'll notice that our image is flipped along the horizontal axis. Additionally, I can click the other one and it'll flip our image vertically from top to bottom. And so that's what those two images will do from there. If I was to create, say, a regular picture box, and notice that it has uh, no picture inside of it, I can also change the color of the picture box inside of it. By going down to my colors palette, I can choose one of our preset colors, so I can also add colors, but let's, in this case, I'll choose magenta. And now we see that our color of our picture box has become a magenta color. If I needed to turn off these X's and I didn't want to see, these are called the, uh, the outlines or the, the rulers to it, I can go up to View and take off the guides. By turning off the guides, we see the paper as it is intended to be printed, where everything is laid out on there relative to the page, and you get the whole idea of what the, uh, your document will look like without having all the, the blue guides and the blue lines around everything. To turn them back on, we can go back up to View, and then click on Guides again. And uh, our outlines and our text guides appear again. You'll notice that it also had a hotkey, so if I hit the F7 key, this will allow me to um, turn on and off my guides as well.